Welcome. We're going to be doing some uh, live hacking demos on Internet of Thingies, showing you how vulnerable these devices are. Before we go there, who are we? Well, the clue's kind of in the name. We're Pentest Partners. We're a team of pen testers. We spend a lot of time looking at mobile applications, web applications, firewalls, all the way through to crazy stuff like hardware reverse engineering and source code reviews. Great fun, but let's get going. So here is my Wi-Fi kettle. What most people say when I say Wi-Fi kettle, they say, why do you have a Wi-Fi kettle, but it, it's actually quite cool. Um, the idea is you connect it up to your home Wi-Fi network, and then you have a mobile app on your phone, and as you roll out of bed in the morning, you press the button on the mobile app, and by the time you get to the kitchen, you've got a nice hot kettle full of water. Brilliant. That's going to save at least 60 seconds of your life. Totally worth the 100 quid. Yeah? Yeah, although one of my colleagues did say, I don't need a Wi-Fi kettle, I've got a wife. <laughs> <laughs> Misogynist, whatever. So. The Internet of Things I love because it's a bit like going back in time, frankly. It's like, it's, like, it's like your own time machine. So the security of these devices compared to desktop operating systems and server OSs now, they're all great. But these things, it's like going back to the year 2000. Yeah, back to Windows 2000. Everything's the wild west of security. Ian, Wi-Fi kettle, how are we going to hack it? So like you said, we're going to go old school with some old school Wi-Fi hacking. Um, as Ken mentioned, it's all embedded. So they want to get it first to market and the security is not one of the things they've really thought about. So, right, okay, um, what we're going to do, what we've got down here at the moment, we've got two access points. One that the kettle's already connected to, because when you set up with your phone, it takes your pre-shared key from your phone and then it allows it to connect to your home network so you can sit embedded and turn it on and off. We've got another one that Ken's demonstrating that, that we own and we can control. So we've set this one up with the same SSID as the one that the kettle is connected to. It's got no encryption on it and uh, we, you know, if we were doing this for real, we'd be sitting outside with a directional antenna to make sure that the power is slightly higher than the one um, that the kettle is connected to. We've also got a Wi-Fi card, a specialist one, where we can send fake disassociation packets. We need to send different MAC addresses um, to, to, to be able to trick the kettle into thinking that the access point that it's connected to is no longer there, and hopefully it will then probe out and connect to us, and then we can you know, see if we can play about with the kettle. So Ken's going to put on our homemade Faraday cage because Technically, disassociation packets is illegal and we don't want to get arrested. Um, so that's... We're shielding it. We're protecting it from you and you protecting it from us. Yeah, indeed. Right, okay. So if we could show you uh, my laptop here, we're just going to quickly run a, um, a tool called AeroDump. This is normally used to capture the WPA key handshakes to allow you to potentially um, uh, uh, crack them and brute force them. We're going to do that a bit later on, but just want to show you this tool because it's easier to see exactly what's going on here. So, right, on the right-hand side, you can see probably, if it's not too bright, popular ISP, so there's two there. Um, and in the encryption column, there's one that's open, so that's the one that we can control. And there's one that's WPA2, the encrypted one, that it's already connected to. And there you go, the power. It, the minus uh, 10 and minus 24, the, the, the lower the number, uh, the higher the power. Um, and then these are the stations um, that are connected to that SSID. This is the kettle, so 3EFD is the MAC address of the kettle. And at the moment it's connected to the MAC address of the access point, which is 6842. And you can see at the top here, 6842 is the MAC address of the encrypted one. We're all following in, right? Yeah, you're all sitting there squinting, so you're probably not. So you just got to take my word for it. Um, we're then just going to send the, air, uh, the tool called AirPlay, which basically is the deauth attack, which is ancient. Um, and what you should see here now, um, the MAC address of the station that the um, kettle's connected to changes from 6842 to 42D2. It's the one that we can control. So hopefully, oh, there you go. It's just done it. So it's sent out the probe, and it's seen that we're available to connect to, and now the kettle's connected to us. So hopefully, now, if I just go back to my Windows partition, I can quickly connect the um, no encrypted wireless access point. Uh, that's not the one, I need to start it up. And the way that the app actually works is it talks over Telnet to the kettle itself. Um, it's a lightweight um, uh, protocol. It basically, you know, the guys that remember the old modem days with AT and then dial up to ISP, it's the same type of stuff. Um, so, as Ken mentioned, we're going back, you know, into the year 2000. Can you actually see that? I'll bring it into the middle. Um, so, oh no, there's a password, Ken. A password. We never find default passwords in production systems, do we? Ever, Ian? Um, but this is where the plot thickens. So, if you set it up with the Android app, it doesn't change the default password. If you set up your iOS app, it changes the default password. However, the default password is one, two, three, four, five, six. And the iOS app right. will only change this to six um, digits. You know, you're not that much better off with the iOS app. We can sit here and manually, not manually, but run a tool that will brute force it through the Telnet protocol. So hopefully, I've typed that right. Yep, awesome. So 
We're just going to send a couple of old AT commands. We're not going to dial up anywhere. We're just going to see a couple of that it understands. AT plus SSID and AT plus key. There you go. Pre-shared key in clear text. That is bonkers. So I can sit outside your house with a directional antenna, point it at the house, knock your kettle off your access point. It connects to me. I send two commands, and it discloses its wireless key, your wireless key, in plain text. That is utterly bananas, don't you think, guys? Now, why is this happening? Well, let's have a little look. So that's the inside of the kettle base, and that is the Wi-Fi module. And that's what's making the Internet of Things. Manufacturers make a thing. To make it Internet-enabled, you bolt one of these in. It's a Wi-Fi chip. You code up a mobile app to talk to it, and then you've got an Internet-enabled thing. But the manufacturers of these things don't get security, which is why this stuff keeps happening. Um, what do we do, though? We're clearly pen testers. We spend a lot of time testing web apps, infrastructures, occasionally kettles, reverse engineering hardware, and source code. Great fun. Um, clearly, we enjoy our job too much.